church. In the next five minutes, I want to show you one of the ways of creating your own habitat. It's called the way of the altar. I want to keep it very simple, calm, so that everybody here can go and do it. Practice the way of the altar. One of the spiritual infrastructure that has the capacity to host an environment, a spiritual environment, is what we call an altar. An altar is a place of intersection between the supernatural and the natural. It's a place where natural men can encounter spirit beings. It's a gate in the spirit. And altars are built. I don't have time to show you the technology of building an altar. It will, it's not for this service. But I just want to show you the significance of altars as a system in the spirit for hosting the presence of God. Look for example, see the way the elders, the patriarchs live their lives. Every time they come to a city or a new environment, the first thing they did was to erect an altar. When this world was destroyed and a new world was created, Noah just came out. But he will not live in this world unless he has first of all done what? Builded an altar. In Genesis 8.22, the moment Noah came out of the ark, the first thing he did was to build an altar. When you came to Elorin, what was the first thing you did? You ran to get a good hostel. <laughs> That's why the system of the environment can manipulate your life. When you build an altar, you begin to live your life from that altar. That altar becomes the spot where your life can be orchestrated from. The altar becomes the system of the spirit that design, manipulate, and control your living. The fathers had enough understanding. So they were men of the altars. You cannot define their life apart from altars. If you want to tell their stories, it is the altars that are lit in their path that will define their existence. Their life cannot be separated from the altars they built. The way you read about the biography of men, if you want to read about the life of the patriarchs, you check the altars they built. Because those altars were revelations of their encounters. Those altars were definitions of the places they entered in the spirit and the covenants they got with God. Their life was defined by altars. So they enter a city, the first thing they do was to erect an altar. You enter a city, the first thing you are looking for is where to live. Abraham built altars before he pitched his tents. He could carry his tents from place to place, but the altars he built, they became signatures in the spiritual. Those altars made it legal for God to place demand on those territories. When he raised an altar, he dedicates that territory to God. And God suddenly has authority over that land. The prince that ruled over that system before he came is disarmed. Because that altar was the commitment of man to dedicate a territory to the Lord. Men of altars. Abraham came out of the ark. He didn't jump looking for where to dwell. He began to look for where to pitch an altar. Because he knew it would be impossible to live in the new creation unless an altar was erected. They were wise men. Wise men. Lot will lift his eyes and see the plains for them because it was full of green vegetation. Who told you green vegetation sustain men? It is spirit that sustains humankind. And men of understanding are men of altars. When they come to a territory, they don't care what happened. They raise altars. Isaac was to run to Egypt from the land of Gera. I said, stay there. It's not the land that prospers men. It is the Lord that prospers people. In that very land that was rocky, he dug wells and water came out. How was it possible? He was a man of altars. These were systems that these men understood. And their life could not deplete in essence. This is why they could trust God. Because they understood the technology of altars. Anywhere you build an altar is will to you as a possession. Nothing can challenge your existence there. He said, Isaac grew and worked strong and became exceedingly great. And the Philippines envied him. How can a nation envy one man? They are men of altars. Nobody prospers without altars. Not one person. Not in this life. 
you like begin to do a business there is a threshold you get to a spirit will appear to you because that region you want to cross men mortars don't cross there you only cross those regions by the help of spirits you can't go beyond this level a spirit will come and say if either you pay allegiance to me or your progress ends prosperity on this side of the divide is a function of spirit enablement and men of wisdom are men that raises all tasks the guy came out of the ship and the first thing he did was to build altars look at the life of abraham god told him to leave his nation to leave his kindred and to leave his family to the land he will show him and in genesis chapter 12 verse 7 the bible said he came to seek him and the first thing as he was entering the land he said he built an altar unto the lord that appeared to him because god told him this is the land and in this land that will make you great instantly the guy rebuilt an altar he was not looking for where to dwell he knew his safety was on the altar the first thing he did was to build an altar before he built a tent he left Sikhen and went to Bethel and the first thing he did in Bethel in Genesis chapter 12 verse 8 was to build an altar when he is leaving a territory he packs his luggages he removes his tent but the altar remains because the altar is a memorial unto God. They were men of altars. The reason your life can be shifted and manipulated is because there are no altars. These guys are wise beings. When they start a business, they build an altar for that business. When they start schooling, they build an altar for that school. When they go to a city, they build an altar. You can't fight them. If you want to attack them, the altar will rage. The fire on the altar will burn. There is no part of their life that is not covenanted on altars. They get married. The first night you are running for honeymoon, they build an altar. This family belongs to the Lord. Their sons can never be vagabonds. They will walk in their heritage because the family exists on altars. Altars are the sure foundations of living. Men without altars live on quicksand. And the challenges, the circumstances of life can shift it away. The way of the water. He said, cast thy bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. Give a portion to seven. Give a portion to eight. For thou knowest not the evil that will come upon the earth. There is a kind of life and intelligence you will apply yourself to. That even if the earth collapse, you will survive. Don't know the evil that will come upon the earth. Even if the earth were to melt, you will survive. They are men of altars. They knew the language of altars. They knew the, the, the systems by which spirits interact with men. Abraham's life was littered with altar. No wonder the Bible says, look unto Abraham. From the rock whence were hewn. Abraham was called a rock like Jesus. His life could not be moved. He became an immortal entity. Because he knew the infrastructures that life would be built upon and life would be immortalized. It was the system of altars. There's no man in scriptures you'll be asked to look onto. It's only the man that understood the technology of altars. Altars, they are the true factors that define human existence. Any area of your life you don't have an altar, Satan can manipulate you. That's where you enforce the promises of God for your life. That is where you bring to bear the purposes of God for your existence. Abraham knew how to secure his destiny. Not insurance company that secures men. What happens when the documents are burned? There is a system of kingdom insurance. It's the system of altars. But very few have altars. For we who are preachers, we have altars over our tongues. That this tongue will not lie. I cannot exaggerate a miracle. Because if I alter something that God has not done, is a statement of distrust in God. That means I don't believe that God has the ability to do it. So I'm not need to lie to create impression. In order never to get to that point, I make a covenant with my tongue. My tongue becomes an altar. If you are a prophet, there has to be an altar with your eyes. Job said his eyes, he vowed that his eyes will not look upon the virgins. An altar. This body, God will keep it. Because this vessel must be pure. To communicate the counsel of God, transform destinies. It's an altar. 
was talking with my friend Solomon yesterday. He said he told the Lord that the day this body is defied, if you die, that's an altar. Strong men are men of altars. Abraham's life, his part of pilgrimage was littered with altars. You can't trace Abraham. You can't know the places Abraham traveled to unless you check the altars that he built. So if you want to know the chronological movement of Abraham, you go and look upon the altars. You will see the altar. There is a signature of it where God first appeared to him. You will see the altar where God promised him that this land belonged to him. You will see the altar where God perfected his covenant with him because he sacrificed Isaac. Every time you want to understand the life of Abraham, you will check the altars that he built. And his life was immortal because as long as those altars can still speak to the heights of the heaven, you cannot erase his existence. Many years later, I, his son Jacob, who was a man of the flesh, not qualified to carry the, the, the blessing, he walked by Bethel. And when he slept, his head was on the altar. And suddenly on that altar, he saw a ladder to heaven. Angels ascending and descending. And he saw God standing on the altar. Because that thing his father had is an immortal dynasty. It was on the strength of the altars of Abraham that Isaac stumbled into encounters. Not because he was a spiritual man. The technology of altars. You want heritage of God to be preserved in your life and communicated to your lineage. Then you must begin to covenant your life on altars. Altars are the insurance policies of heaven. Everything that preserves the heritage of God in a life and in a territory is predicated on the quality of altars that are erected. The wisdom of habitats. There's no altar in your life. You can choose to make decisions carelessly. The way of altars. That's how you create your atmosphere. That was how Daniel survived in Babylon. Because for every morning, afternoon, and evening was an altar. You will kneel down and pray facing Jerusalem. So even when the king said, if you pray, you will die, he was not moved. It's not the security system of Babylon that keeps him. It was the altar he built that preserved his life. The Bible said he went praying and his windows were open. He didn't hide to pray. He believed on the altar. And when they threw him to the lion's den, it was proven that he was really defended, not by the powers of Babylon, but by the government of heaven. In the lion's den, the guy was there all night. The king rushed in the morning. He said, oh, Daniel. And he said, oh, king, live forever. You can't hurt a man of altars. A man that has altars, his life is gathered in the altars that he has built. That altar must be destroyed before the man goes down. Lions became incapacitated because a man of altar showed up. These lions were hungry. They keep them to carry feats of wickedness. The Bible said when they threw his accusers, they didn't touch the ground. They were torn from the air. What was it that kept Daniel? It was a mystery. And that mystery was praised in the altar. You think there are no forces in this land, you are joking. You think the things that happen in this land are coincidences, you are joking. There are spirits enthroned over different territories. Because spirit fight for territories. That's why even God himself fight for lands. They fight for lands. Say, rise ye up, take up thy journey and go beyond the river Anon. Behold, I have given unto you Sihon the Amorite and his king. He said, begin to contend with him in battle and possess the land. Spirits are in the business of securing territories. And the only way humankind can partner with spirit to secure authority over territories is when they erect altars. Because those altars become the landing point of those spirits. And on the strength of those altars, many spiritual possibilities can take place. When Abraham came to dwell in Mambri, he raised an altar at the gates of Mambri. That was why when he sat in his house, suddenly he saw three men walking. The altar he built became the landing point of God. And he saw three men. He knew these ones, they are gods. He walked to the man. He said, please, sirs, come into the house. The place those guys descended was not a natural place. They landed on his altar. He knew that only spirits are light on altars. He became the basis that furnished his discernment. They landed at the gate where the altar was in. They caught them. That was the day his plague entered. 
it was on the strength of the visitation of those spirits that his dead body was given life that was when the womb of Sarah was rejuvenated and he said in the next time of life in the next time of life you shall be with child it was on the strength of that encounter that Abraham was granted access for the first time to stand in the courts of heaven and negotiate about the destiny of nations it was that encounter that brought him into the greatest stature in his work with God so what if you find 50 righteous men will you still destroy the city the guy was talking from the heights of the heaven what opened here was a court session he was no longer on earth they were negotiating about territories in the heavens of god how did the man get to that level of rank and stature is because he built an altar one man could negotiate the destiny of a nation because of the strength of his altar his altar furnished his discernment his altar gave him joy with god and his altar ended the plague of his life Three men landed at the gates of Mambri. That was where the altar was. The wise man. Altars. You want encounters and you don't have altars. You are joking. Where will the spirit hide? <laughs> Go and ask men of encounters. They will tell you. Where will the spirit alight? Some people have built altars with the watches of the day. Every 12 midnight they are standing so most of their encounters is around that time because they have an appointment with zion you think you just walk on the street and stumble on an encounter you are joking moses had an encounter because he went to horeb noah had an encounter because he built an altar and he picked what was in the heart of god jacob had an encounter because he fell on the altar that was built in Bethel. altars are the precursors of encounters i mean people are just you think who told you spirituality is luck and chance or are you, are you all right do you know the intelligence that these beings walk for? the spirit that gathered the earth together when you look at the seasons the patterns the cycles does that not inform you the height of intelligence where god operates from he didn't leave anything to chance he put everything in the circuitry and the pattern of operation from the very beginning he knew he would not come back to create trees so he planted the seed in the tree the tree will keep producing itself. You mean that kind of person with that level of meticulous operation will take things by chance and luck? Who told you you will stumble into encounters by luck? They are deliberately orchestrated. And one of the precursors of encounter is the altars that you build. You will never meet God without an altar. Never. It doesn't happen and it will never happen. The Bible spoke about Cornelius. He said his offerings and alms giving have risen to heaven as a memorial. There were 12 apostles. Which one did God send? Peter was in the upper room praying. God reached out to Cornelius because the time of visitation came on the strength, the incense rising from his altar. And he needed an apostle to go convert Cornelius. It was the one that was on the altar he visited. What makes you appear in the radar of Zion is the incense rising from your altar. If you don't have an altar, you'll be among men. You'll just be numbered among the multitude. Go and check scripture. Every man God worked with, he was a man of the altar. That's how you create your habitat. And that's why you become indestructible. Even Satan will advise himself before he comes close to you. Because he knows it will be danger. How do you touch what belongs to God? Any area you covenant with God on an altar becomes the property of God. It's consecrated. It's a hallowed substance. That's why you can't touch some men. If you touch them, you are gone. If you like, go and quote all the doctrine. Their life has become altars. They have covenanted everything to God. Touch them, you are gone. I told you the story of Omar Abba yesterday. He insulted him. He said, look around you. The things you are seeing, see them well because this is the last day you will see them. <laughs> Another one insulted him. He said, Ah, me. He said, As you go now, your tongue is taken away. Your tongue. <laughs> how, do, how will that happen? Is it that you will become dumb? The guy was crossing the road. He had an accident, and the glass of the car. You don't let a man of altar speak. Don't grieve a man of altars. You are in trouble. Because altars speak in the heights of the heavens.
hot as it will cost you everything but it is worth it because everything you can have is also predicated on the strength of that altar altars are the ways of living and the patriarchs had that understanding because he created their atmosphere some people become so strong on this altar that when they walk away from the altar they carry the altar to everywhere they go they carry it they carry it they have become so one with the spirit that the spirit travels with them they become moved by altars because their life have been wasted on the altar so everywhere they go the altar travel with them it is the system of kingdom dominion to be able to create an atmosphere that can host heaven all the time that was the life of jesus jesus was a, he was so altered until a point came when he became a mobile altar and jesus we say the son of man which is in heaven meanwhile he was walking the street of, of nazareth don't be a common man don't be an ordinary man don't be an intelligent man be a spiritual man it's a function of altars kill the distractions that want to take you away from the presence fight to make the presence of God your habitat. Fight for it. Satan will come to distract you. Challenges of life will fight you. But fight. If you can apprehend the presence. Every other issue will be killed. That was the wisdom. That the patriarchs downloaded. So they lived every day. From one altar to another. They pitched tents. But they lived on altars. Their lives were defined by their altars. Their movements were captured on the strength of their altars. The altars they erected became the roadmap of their sojourning on the face of the earth. You will never see their name written on any soil unless there is first of all an altar. When you travel from city to city, raise altars. When you go from jobs to job, raise altars. It will become the system of kingdom eternal and everlasting relevance those altars will become the vent through which the dimensions of heaven can be trafficked those altars will become the system that will give god legality over those regions and territories where there are altars there are encounters where there are altars there are spiritual possibilities where there are altars then there is a place of the dwelling of god it is on altars that heaven can become the mirror image of earth if we have enough altars in this world this world will become the kingdom of our God. The reason it seems as if darkness is prevailing is because there are many demonic altars and these beings are wise. The Habalist knows the technology of altars. Everybody that works with a demon is a man of altars. Only Christians take altars for granted because we don't understand the system of kingdom dominance. We don't understand the system of colonization. Those in the demonic know it. You need to make it a lifestyle. Make your academics an altar. Make your eyes an altar. Your tongue an altar. Covenant everything you have to God. And service it by prayer. Because it will determine and define your existence on earth. Yeah, na 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 na. na na na. Yeah, na 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 to guide your heart the bible said guide your heart with all diligence out of it are the issues of life when you guide your heart it can only keep you but your territory will be destroyed and if your territory is destroyed you can lose everything so lord guarded his heart the bible said daily his righteous soul was grieved because he kept himself intact but he didn't have all tasks to deliver the land the reason canaan stood was because abraham had 
altars littered everywhere in Canaan. There's no party we go to that is not littered with altars. Bethel was preserved because there were altars on every side of Bethel. Lord went to Sodom and didn't raise altars. A point came, he lost his family, he lost his wife, he lost his daughter, and even his name was lost. He became the ancestor of the Moabites. You want to preserve your heritage, you want to keep the land and the things that God has committed to your hand, the way is the way of altars. It's a responsibility for every son. And that's why I told you, in this kingdom, we live as priests and kings, not as sons. The way of altars is the way of existence. Here, here. 